Hello, welcome to the Monday, February 4th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I got a couple updates regarding ongoing sextortion scams. Uh, these scams have been ongoing for a few months now and it looks like they're working uh, because, well, uh, they keep slightly changing, they keep improving somewhat. So the latest scams include screenshots from random adult videos as proof. There's also a version uh, going around that does use, again, passwords and claims that they come from a compromised uh, pornographic video site. The screenshots they're including, they're sort of fairly generic uh, screenshots from random pornographic videos. So possibly if someone watched videos like this, then they may feel like these are screenshots from actual videos they watched. And talking about how successful they are, our handler Rick has been tracking the Bitcoin addresses used in past scams. And thanks everybody for sending them into us. So if you have any samples, just pass them along and we can add these Bitcoin addresses to the list that we are tracking. I mentioned before that we noticed that the Bitcoins from various addresses that we have been tracking are starting to get consolidated. Now, up to now, there have been about 400 addresses that we are tracking and about 56 of them have actually received payments. And those payments have totaled about $100,000 worth. But we kind of knew that uh, these 400 Bitcoin addresses are really just a small percentage of what's actually being used in recent weeks. We have seen Bitcoins from some of these 400 addresses being consolidated and uh, the addresses they have been moved to, well, uh, Rick has identified two Two of them, one currently holds 21 million dollars worth of Bitcoin, the other one about 18 million dollars worth. So total 40 million dollars worth that was made so far apparently with ransom. Now at this point the money is moving out of these wallets again which is sort of an indication that this probably is now being handled by a Bitcoin mixing service, which is well sort of the cryptocurrency equivalent of money laundry, where you are mixing bad money with, well, I guess not so bad money, and then try to obfuscate where the money actually goes. And Rapid7 has a blog post about how a recent denial of service attacks took advantage of Ubiquiti devices. Ubiquiti, if you're not familiar with them, it's a fairly popular manufacturer of wireless devices like access points, but also a lot of sort of carrier gear like for local wireless providers that are sort of providing wireless access for communities and they often show up in homes, small businesses, and then they often use the Unify brand. Now, the problem here is a discovery service that's listening on port 10001. It's listening for UDP packets and a simple four byte UDP message will trigger sort of an identify response from the device, which contains a few hundred bytes. So you have an amplification of the order of like 30 to 60 with uh, this particular attack. Rapid7 used its project Sonar to conduct the internet wide scan for uh, these exposed devices. And they found almost half a million of devices that had this port exposed. Now, interestingly, almost half of them are located in Brazil. And apparently in particular in Brazil, uh, the sort of carrier option of uh, these devices devices are quite popular. And as part of the identifier response, you also get the SSID of the wireless access point. And according to Rapid7, many of them are sort of consistent with like small ISPs that probably are using these devices to provide internet service in communities. Now, Ubiquiti published a workaround how you can disable this service on the device and Rapid7 is linking to this particular post. Just a simple one-liner. So if you are using any Ubiquiti device, particularly if they're exposed, like uh, they have this USG, this firewall product and such, then uh, definitely check that this service is not reachable from the outside. 
And at the Usenix Enigma conference last week, uh, Google engineer Emily Stark talked about uh, Google Chrome experimenting with a feature to warn users of lookalike domains. Now there's sort of uh, two kinds of these lookalike domains. They're the ones that use international characters. They're actually relatively easy to spot and uh, many browsers have become quite strict as to when they are displaying these international characters. So a lot of these international character tricks uh, don't really work that well, but you can still do simple typos and you can still replace like an L with a one, which sort of uh, looks uh, fairly close. So in this experiment in Google Chrome, they're trying to sort of identify these lookalike domains and then display a warning if uh, Google Chrome thinks that you may be going to a different domain than you intend to be going. Of course, it is not easy to get right, to not flood the user with meaningless alerts and to really identify these common typos. And now at this point, it's in Google Chrome's Canary build, which is their beta version, and it may show up later in Google's mainstream Chrome release. Then there's a different type of a ransom attack going around currently against some YouTube channels. The problem here is that the attacker will submit two fake copyright complaints against this YouTube channel with YouTube. Now, YouTube actually doesn't do any checking on uh, these complaints, but if it receives three complaints in three months, then it will block the channel. And of course, whoever runs the channel will be out of uh, their impressions, will be out of some revenue if they monetize their channel. This turns out to be a rather difficult attack to recover from and a couple of YouTube channels have already been hit by this and have been blocked at least temporarily uh, due to these attacks. They don't seem to be hitting like the real big channels uh, because uh, those uh, YouTube may be a little bit more concerned about but more smaller medium size uh, YouTube channels. And uh, the ransom demand is also not really all that outrageous, sort of in the 100 to 300 dollar range. So a lot of these smaller channels, they may get a little bit more money out of it every month than these hundred dollars and such. So they may be willing uh, to just uh, pay up. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.